want you to think about the most important decision you've ever made in your life, the decision that made you who you are. Maybe it was where to go to school or what to study in school or who to marry or who not to marry, where to live. What is that decision that you made that made you the person that you are today? Now imagine that from the time you were born, you were told you had no choices, you had no options. You will not have a job, you will not have friends, you will forever stay in your parents' home and never have your own home. That is the reality for over four million Americans with intellectual disabilities. From the time they are born, they are told you don't have a choice, you will not have a life. So what happens to them? They end up stuck on their parents' couch doing nothing for their entire lives. Now maybe sitting on the couch would be fun for a day or two, but not year after year after year. Only 15% of people with intellectual disabilities have jobs. Everybody else is on the couch. So let me tell you a little bit about Will. Will was born with an intellectual disability, and he went to school, he went to elementary school, and he was in a separate, segregated class for other students with disabilities. Two or three times a week, he was brought down to the regular education class so that he could meet some kids and say hi and sing a few songs. That's pretty much the way his education progressed the whole time he was in school. Around third grade, we sort of got rid of the academics because he had some major learning challenges. But everybody knew his face, and they would high-five him in the hallway. Hey, man, how you doing? How you doing? But nobody ever stopped to listen to see how he was actually doing. They just knew his face, knew he had a disability, and wanted him to be happy, so they high-fived in the hallway. Actually, everyone knew his face so well that by the time he was a senior, he was voted homecoming king. And at the homecoming football game, the news came out, and they did this whole thing about how this special guy was so loved that he was homecoming king. But when the game was over, he went home by himself. There were no friends coming over for a party. There were no text messages. There was nothing, because nobody really knew him. They just knew that he had a disability and gave him a good high five. So when Will graduated from high school, he did what most people with intellectual disabilities do. He went home and he sat on the couch year after year after year. But then something happened. In 2008, the Higher Education Opportunity Act was passed. With this act, people with intellectual disabilities were given the option to go to the place where everybody else in America goes after high school to figure out who they are and what they want to do. This act gives people with intellectual disabilities the option of going to college. Now, there's over 200 post-secondary college programs for students with intellectual disabilities. When I say intellectual disability, I mean people whose IQs are below 70, and they really struggle in learning academics, they struggle learning those activities of daily living, and they struggle with social skills. So now they have the opportunity to go to college and receive an education in all of these areas. So there's now 200 programs across the country. There's a clearinghouse called thinkcollege.net where people can go and get information about these programs, but every program is very, very different. Um, I'm going to tell you about the one Will went to. So there's four parts to this education. It's college, so obviously we're going to have some academics. Um, students with intellectual disabilities have the opportunity to go to traditional classes with traditional college students. Not everybody in the room knows they have a disability, but they have the opportunity to learn. And they can't learn at all because of their disability, but maybe they can learn 20% or 40%, but that's 20 or 40% more than they got sitting on the couch doing nothing. And not only do they have the opportunity to learn content, they have the opportunity to learn all that other stuff you learn by going to college, how to be responsible, how to have follow through, how to participate and be responsible for your own learning. In addition to an education in academics, um, these programs also provide an education in independent living. Part of that definition of intellectual disability 
includes really struggling with learning the activities of daily living. So by having the opportunity to go to college and live in a dorm and live independently while receiving an education, students have the opportunity to learn all of that stuff that everybody else can just sort of figure out. But because of their disability, these students can't. Living in the dorms, they can make mistakes while they have support to learn from those mistakes. And they can learn how to do laundry and manage time and how you make it through a day from start to finish, how you get from here to there, how you plan out your day. These are all things that have stood in the way traditionally for students with intellectual disabilities to make it in this world. And now they can receive that education. In addition to that, these programs have education in the area of socialization. This one's kind of hard to teach because we've really taught people with intellectual disabilities that they're exceptional that they need exceptional and different treatment, but that actually gets in the way. So we want students with intellectual disabilities to be able to go to college and be treated like everyone else. When they arrive at campus on that first day, the president of the university does not need to know the names of the students that have disabilities unless the president of the university knows the name of every single freshman coming in the school. Um, we want students to be able to join clubs and Greek life and participate like everyone else without being high-fived and treated differently because of that disability. We want a student like Will to be able to join a fraternity and just enjoy the day with his brothers and not have newscasters come in and say, look, an exceptional student has joined an exceptional organization. We want the same treatment so that he can learn how to interact because when he has a job one day, he's gonna need to know how to interact with his coworkers. When he has an apartment one day, he's gonna need to know how to interact with his neighbors. So we wanna be able to provide that socialization education. The last area is career development. Remember I told you only 15% of people with intellectual disabilities have jobs. But through an education, we can actually take that statistic of 15% and turn it on its head so that 85% of people with intellectual disabilities have employment. We do that by letting students participate in internships. Generally, students with intellectual disabilities have very limited experiences, so they have no idea what they want to do for a job. So they have the opportunity to be in an internship each semester during the four years that they're in college and try things out. Figure out what they like, figure out what they don't like, figure out what they're good at and what they're not so good at, so that they're on a path for real jobs, real employment, and that will give them the opportunity to make those sort of life-changing decisions that you had the opportunity to make, to make those sort of decisions that made you who you are. We want students with intellectual disabilities to be able to make those sorts of decisions too. So that's what Will did. Will went to college, he joined a fraternity, he has a group of friends that he is still in contact with to this day. About two years after he graduated, he sent me a picture of a painting on a wall and I was like, nice painting, why are you sending me this? And he said, I'm 28 years old, and for the first time in my life, I can hang a picture on a wall where I want it because it's my house, it's not my parents, it's mine. So I wanna leave you with two things. One, please know that college is possible for students with intellectual disabilities, and it's life-changing. Let's get those folks off the couch and back into society with us where they belong. And secondly, I need your help. I need you to remember that exceptional treatment does not equal an exceptional life. It equals an exception from life. Thank you.